Sure. Um, so our bodies mainly communicate through chemicals. Uh, we know a lot about this. For example, you have um, hormones such as insulin that travels in your blood to regulate the glucose blood sugar levels. We also have neurotransmitters such as dopamine communicate between neurons. Uh, almost everything is we think about our chemical sensing, including taste and smell, all the chemicals from outside the world that comes into our mouth and nose and we sense them as taste and smell. But an ignored part of biology has been this idea of pressure sensing or mechanosensation. And one of the systems that's very well known to depend on it, for example, is the sense of touch and pain. So this is when physical mechanical forces are translated into electrical or chemical senses that our neurons can understand. Uh, it also includes hearing and sensing blood pressure. And so the, how we sense these physical forces and how they're translated into a language that our cells can understand has been a long mystery. It has been known that these um, our sensors are what we call ion channels. These are specialized proteins that are fascinating little um, molecules. Just to give you um, a scope of how small these channels are, let's say there's about 500 cells in a grain of rice, and these proteins that we're talking about compared to a single cell is 100,000 times smaller. So even most microscopes will not be able to see it, it's that small. But what they do is fascinating. They sit on the, on the cell membrane, the border of the cell, and they can either open or close. It's very simple, but when they open ions, in this case, cations such as sodium and potassium come in, which activates the cell. So identity of these tiny little um, molecules were not, were not known. Um, so my lab, uh, Bertrand Coste, a very talented postdoc in the lab, came to identify these, and he took a very simple approach. He tried to, instead of finding them in uh, neurons of sense of touch or pain, he looked at just cells in a dish that would have the similar property. And from then, he started this investigation of which of the 20,000 genes that we have in our genome is the one in 20,000 is responsible for this activity that we call the, the channel that would sense touch and pain. So it was a very uh, grueling, um, difficult project. But using you know, modern genomics techniques, he, he found the one that um, is responsible for, for this um, sensing mechanical force. Now, later studied, after identifying it over the last 10 years, uh, work both in, from human genetics as well as animal models, we know that this piezo family of uh, pressure sensing ion channels are indeed how you sense touch, how you sense uh, proprioception, and how you sense blood pressure, for example. And proprioception is a very interesting sense related to touch that most people never heard of it, but it's absolutely essential for simple tasks such as walking and, and standing up. So what is proprioception? Um, well, you needed to do something as simple as closing your eyes and touching your nose. So how did I just do that? Without my eyes closed, where did I know where my fingers are in space? This is all because of proprioception. So proprioception is the sense of where your limbs are compared to your body. And this is done by sensing how much each of your different muscles are stretched. From this information in your brain, you have a very strong visual of where your limbs are compared to your body. So without it, you can't do what I just did. And you also have a very hard time uh, standing up and walking because you're not getting that feedback from your body. Instead, you have to compensate and completely depend on your sight, the visual system to understand it. And so humans who are deficient in PSO2, um, and this is work done by Alex Chesler at NIH and others, completely do not have this sense of touch and proprioception and have very difficulties walking and uh, doing the simple things that we take for granted. In addition to not sensing touch and proprioception, we found that PSO2 is also required for a specific form of pain and that is called tactile allodynia. All that means is in instances where uh, touch becomes painful, 
PSO2 is very important. Now think about it. If you get hit on your finger with a hammer, that's what we call acute pain. So this is another channel, not PSO2. We don't actually know what the identity of this is. But PSO2 seems to be involved in instances where, for example, after sunburn, um, you feel like just touch becomes painful on your shoulders or just the warm shower becomes painful. And all these sensitized pains, which is actually an important clinical aspect of neuropathic pain, seems to be due to PSO2. And this is exciting because it suggests that um, inhibiting PSO2 can affect uh, or help people who suffer, for example, from neuropathic pain. So I think about finding piezos is like um, identifying a key to a door. So this whole problem that I set up, that how do you sense physical forces that's important for touch, pain, hearing, blood pressure sensing, all our mechanical sensations. And this molecule is allowing us to understand the biology behind it. But interestingly, this idea of mechanobiology is much more than the few very good examples of pressure sensing. So when cells divide or migrate, take the example in cancer cells where in metastasis, cells leave their local environment, have to detach from that tissue, squeeze through blood vessels and, and go to other um, tissues. How does it do this? Lots of mechanobiology is involved in all these important basic biological processes. And the exact role of how sensing tension and pressure in these systems were not known. So identifying piezo is kind of like a key that allows us to look at all of these other processes that depend on pressure sensing. And this is kind of the beginning of these studies. There's some very interesting new data that piezo is involved, indeed involved in these basic cellular processes like cell migration. On the other hand, um, as you mentioned, the mechanical forces are also um, important for from the engineering point of view and haptics for example is the idea of using technology to um, simulate or act like the sense of touch and 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 our studies could be very helpful for this so haptics is important every time you use your smartphone that gives you feedback or in future of virtual reality where you have to simulate touch and motion um, of course this could also be very important for amputees that will depend on these novel artificial limbs we're making to um, help them sense the, the uh, tactile environment that they live in. So the identification of piezo, which is the natural way of how animals sense touch, could give lessons to engineers to come up with ideas of how uh, the artificial and the natural uh, can learn from each other. So as I mentioned, PSO2 in both humans and animal models has been shown to be important for the sensitized pain that's clinically relevant for neuropathic pain. So we believe that future studies in identifying ways to inhibit PSO2 might be very beneficial to patients suffering from neuropathic pain. It is important to remember, given all these different roles that PSO2 is playing, including sensing touch and proprioception, um, blocking PSO2 in, in, in the body completely might not be a good idea. So we can't imagine a pill blocking PSO2 to be useful, but local application of inhibitors um, in painful areas in, in, as I said, neuropathic pain or other indications might indeed be a possibility. I think so. So um, one of the fascinating things about science is that we were focused on pain and touch, but um, during evolution, if uh, uh, one of one problem is solved, for example, by finding this mechanosensor that senses tension and pressure, it uses it again and again in other systems. 
In this case, we have evidence that piezos are used to sense bone density, as well as blood pressure, as I mentioned. So we can imagine that manipulating piezo levels um, could be beneficial for hypertension or osteoporosis, for example. I can give one other example, and again, this is the beauty of science where it takes us to directions that we did not anticipate, how piezo-1, the sister molecule of piezo-2 involved in touch, may be involved in protection from malaria. So we found together with collaborators that um, too much piezo-1 in red blood cells causes red blood cell dehydration. By itself, this is not a very profound clinical um, anomaly, um, but we found in animal models that if you have a sim similar deficit, you actually, uh, the animals were protected against malarial infection in the sense that they had less cerebral malaria. And now we're actually in the middle of this and others are working on it to see, and there's evidence that this is indeed the case as a preliminary data, that humans that carry this allele, too much piezo, a mutation that causes too much piezo signaling, are actually uh, protected from infections against malaria. So this is another example of how mechanosensing and red blood cells, which now we know it controls its cell volume, could have very interesting implications on diseases that we had never linked pressure sensing to malaria infection.